two off before you. They're not here this evening, so. Heather, you're up first. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Heather Van Pooker from the Ferndale Housing Commission. Thanks for the opportunity to give you a quick update. Um, we just uh, seated our uh, resident board, our resident committee over at Autumn House. So we now have two official and active resident committees at each of our properties. Um, the next goal will be to reach out to our um, families that are in our scattered site homes and um, also to better engage with our families that are involved in our Section 8 program. But I'm thrilled to report that we've got committees um, established at both properties and Withington is going like gangbusters, planning lots of educational activities, mm -hmm. social opportunities, Opportunities, and I hope Autumn House will take off in the same manner. So I'm happy to report that. Oh, really Thank good. you for the opportunity. Thanks. Thanks, Heather. Good to see you. Uh, next would be the Downtown Development Authority, and I see our Executive Director, Mary Hicks, is here with us this evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, it's hard to believe, as I'm looking at the calendar here, it's September 26th, and summer is now long over. Um, but I did want to thank everybody that came out and enjoyed the Get Real Movie series on the third Thursdays. Uh, we did The Sandlot, Disney's Cars, uh, The Princess Bride. Um, good attendance at those. I want to thank all of our sponsors, too. Uh, Embrew, Ferndale Collision, Painting with a Twist, uh, Jim Schaefer and Associates Realtors, The Candlewick Shop, Living Modes, Treat Dreams, the Ferndale Elks, and the Ferndale Community Concert Band. Um, we do have one more Third Thursday activity coming up on October 20th, which is Fido Does Ferndale. Um, bring Fido downtown and join us for a doggy-centric event. Uh, there will be vendors, a canine treasure hunt, a pooch parade, different contests and prizes. A lot more of that information is also available on our Facebook page and website. Uh, and our sponsors for that I'd like to thank as well, which is Pet Supplies Plus, Scrubbers, and Maestro's Dog House. Or sorry, Dog Hoss, I pronounced that incorrectly. <laughs> um, I, I my phonetic spelling here to go back and look at. Uh, also, um, kind of just wrapping up with some of the other summertime activities. Uh, as you know, this past month, uh, DIY. Uh, took place on September 16th through 18th, and then just this past weekend was the Funky Ferndale Art Fair. The first year we've split those two um, into separate weekends. We're still getting feedback from different business owners and things to see how they liked that and how uh, people enjoyed it. Uh, the parking was easier, that type of thing, um, which was kind of one of our hopes. Uh, so we'll see how that went and kind of decide from there what we do uh, for future events. Um, but I uh, just wanted to thank everybody for coming out and all the organization that went into that. Thank the uh, DPW, the Ferndale Police Department, as well as the Fire Department for all their hard work. Uh, the Auxiliary Police as well uh, that come out and help us with all those events. Uh, another event coming up is the, and this is getting a little bit further out, um, into November 26th will be our Small Business Saturday uh, and tree lighting that day. Um, and there will be more information that will be um, coming out from our business development committee members on that soon. Uh, as, as soon as we have a little bit more information uh, that's sponsored through American Express, they always send us a lot of different packets and, and things like that. But keep an eye on the Facebook page as well as our website for that too. And if you are a vendor or a business downtown and you are interested in participating, you can always get a hold of us. Um, by calling the DDA office at 248-546-1632 or email us at info at downtownferndale.com. Uh, one other thing I'd like to invite everyone to, uh, council members, if you have the time, on November 10th at 8 a.m. during our regular DDA board meeting um, right here in council chambers at City Hall, we will be joined by Matt Wagner from the National Main Street Center. Uh, and Matt has over 20 years of experience revitalizing downtowns and attracting new businesses. Um, currently, he is in the process of analyzing some of the data that uh, the DDA collected in, for a retail survey in 2013, as well as the recent market analysis completed by the city in October of 2015 through Gibbs Planning Group, um, which you may be more familiar with. That one's a little more recent. Um, his analysis will give us some insight into what those numbers mean. Um, also, we'll be providing some more specific recommendations for tactics going forward to attract uh, retail into downtown Ferndale. I know this is something that was on my radar the day that I took this job. I know that this was on council's radar by going through 
uh, planning <coughs> sessions and the DDA. Um, so this is kind of where we're at right now, taking that next step so that we can really start focusing in on its specifics uh, as far as the type of retail we want to get into. I also want to thank uh, the people at Oakland County Main Street um, for assisting with a technical grant for that. Uh, they're paying for all expenses for Matt to come to town, do this uh, study for us, uh, of a grant of $5,000 to the Ferndale DDA. So we're grateful for that as well. Very nice. And that is all I have for you right now. Excellent. Excellent. I speak the chair. Barry, where would you like people to contact if they've got feedback, particularly about the art fair split? I've had a number of people come up to me and talk to me about that. Can I just have them call the DDA? or Have them. Yep, absolutely. Have them give us a call. Again, that's 248-546-1632. Or they can email the info at downtownferndale.com. Sure. We'll All right, it. thank you. Yep. It was, a, it was a really nice art fair. I mean, the, the weather helped, but the yeah. crowds were nice, the organization was nice, so congrats on a great great job on the art fair. Yep, yeah. went well. <laughs> thank you. Good. Okay, thank you, Barry. Uh, and finally, we have a presentation on the Recreation Summer Program, and Emmanuel Johnson, you're going to give that presentation. Is that correct? Yes, sir, I am. Excellent. How's everybody doing this evening? Good. Wonderful. Good, good, good. good. It's touch screen? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, is there. Maybe it's that. All right. I can just press this. Cool. So, uh, like you guys know, my name is Emmanuel Johnson. I am a recreation aide over at the Rec Department, and I am the uh, director of our wonderful, wonderful summer camp program, which <laughs> I'm going to be telling you a little bit about now. Cool. Uh, you guys remember here from, yesterday, uh, from last year, so. You know a little bit about the program, it's state licensed, it's nine weeks, it's for school age children, running over at the Coolidge Center right now. Uh, and I know I talked last year a little bit about what we value and want to like emphasize that as well. Uh, we are not just about come here and we'll watch your kids for eight hours. We actively <laughs> engage, we are uh, trying to build these kids up, have them socially develop, have them well balanced and, and ready to tackle different problems as they continue to grow older and face different problems. So Excellent. that's one of the big goals that we have uh, in this camp. Uh, uh, but a big part of that is obviously fun. So we have presentations. We go on at least one field trip every week. Most of the time it's like two or three uh, this past summer. Uh, we were out of here. Uh, we go swimming a lot. We uh, try to vary up the activities that we do. We also have weekly themes. I think I talked about that as well before. Uh, every week is uh, structured differently so that we can continue to engage the kids in different ways and have them uh, not burn out as the summer goes on. Mm -hmm. uh, and you guys want to see the Spider-Man video again? Are you good? Because I got two other videos actually. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> How do I play them? <laughs> and I just wanted to throw these in there to like give you guys an idea of some of the activities that we do. So this was at a. Uh, one of the filters that we went to that Catalpa Oaks. Oh, a zip line, yeah. Yes. Awesome, I had to love that. Mm -hmm. The ones that could get on. <laughs> Greg, is that you? Yeah, uh, <laughs> that would be me, I would love it. Well, that was uh, yeah. they, the Oakland County, and I, I don't know if I mentioned this last year, but they do a lot in uh, helping us out, giving us different grants for bounce houses and uh, sponsoring different activities. Yeah. Uh, like that one, it was a, a come out and play event that we went to that was uh, free for everybody to come out. So we, you know, uh, have a really good partnership with them. Uh, we also have this. This is one of our in-house activities. Do I just click it? All right. There it is. Hey, this is the last battle of the day. <laughs> Girls, are you ready? <laughs> Boys, are you ready? <laughs> ready? Actually, one of our counselors, his name is Khalid, and he, let me say, the counselors this year have been uh, immensely helpful in making sure that this program runs without a hitch. Uh, we, I say we try to actively engage them, and that's 
part of the structure of what we want to do, but it doesn't work if the counselors aren't willing to actively engage them and, and get off their butt and go in there and, mm -hmm. and talk to the kids, get to know the kids, to figure out their likes and dislikes and how they can help them to grow and mature as, as a person, not just a kid. Uh, I know last year I got up and said that it was our most successful year ever, and that was true at the time. Uh, but this, had, <laughs> this year went beyond my expectations. I had hoped, based on our growth over the past five years, that we would fill out one session of camp, or maybe even two sessions of camp. We filled up every single session of camp this year, uh, which was beyond anything that I could have thought of. The, the reason you see the average campers in 2016 right there at 48, and the only reason that it was like that was because we were short staffed for the first couple of weeks, and we ended up having to cut it down uh, to 40 campers instead of 50 campers. Otherwise, it'd be a clean 50 that would have filled out the entire summer. So it, it, it was, it's been a great, great summer. Uh, and we've had like people on the waiting list and, and waiting to get in. So the, our program is really in demand right now when it comes to summertime activities. Uh, and yeah, that's the, yeah. the end goal. We get a lot of positive reviews. Wear them out, that's the end goal. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. If, if we're not tired and they're not tired at the end of the day, we haven't done our jobs. That's, that's how I look at it. So, uh, yeah, we've gotten a lot of positive reviews. I put out a survey uh, to the parents as well, got about uh, 15 responses back, all of them glowingly positive about everything that we do. They appreciate uh, uh, all that we put into the camp and, and making it the best that it can be. So, yeah, that's excellent. Much it. Anyone have any questions for oh, me? Nice job. This is fantastic. And especially cool. when you look at the growth year over year, uh, it's outstanding. I just have a oh, comment. Yeah. Um, my son Owen and my son Owen had he went during the water wars. Oh, in May. We, yes. Yes. So he. So he so, was he was there for that. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that. He he loved it. He had Good. a great time. Good. Uh, a couple questions. Um, sure. Who is eligible to participate? What uh, what's the what is the eligibility? Do you have to be a Ferndale resident, a part of the Ferndale Public Schools? Can you be anybody? I mean, you can who, be anybody. We anybody. we open it up to everybody. To everybody. Okay. Cool. Um, and then secondly, since, since you've been so successful, um, it, what would be your wish, if you, if, you, if you could have something else next year, more support, more whatever, what would be your wish for next year to make the program even well, better? Well, I know one of the big things that we're looking at right now is finding uh, or surveying different locations that we can move to because we've really outgrown the Kulik Center at this mm -hmm. point. Uh, right. 50 kids packed in there throughout the whole summer was a lot to manage, so yeah. if we can look at getting a larger location we because we're technically licensed for 100 kids in the program okay. it's just the site because of the square footage we are only allowed to max out at 50 uh, while we're there so gotcha. for next year I'd really because we I mean we are also in a partnership with uh, Ferndale Public Schools and, and uh, doing their latchkey program and, and doing different stuff with that and with us being in there I think that because a lot of the kids that are in that latchkey program are not necessarily kids that are in my camp. i say maybe 20% of the kids in the Latchkey program or even in the schools are in the camp. So with us being in there and being able to reach all of those kids for stuff like the summer program, I think that I'm expecting next year another huge boom in, mm -hmm. in how many kids that we see. So it'll be pretty important to, to look at different places. So if I may, to follow up on that, are you so from a larger space, I mean, are you envisioning something in the public schools? Are you thinking the rowing club? Are you thinking... We're not sure right now. We're, we're trying to, uh, because I have to go and see how they'll work out. Because I don't want to just get a large place that's not going to be effective for what we're trying to do there. Right. So we right. need to survey different locations. We don't have any one specific location in mind just yet. Okay. But we are looking at the schools and the curling club and other places like that to see what might work best. Well, please come back and let us know what you need. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Great job. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Appreciate you being here. All right. Uh, next item of business would be called the audience. This is your opportunity for those of you in the audience to address council on any issue that you'd like. It's not on the agenda because you could talk to that when we get to that part of the agenda. But if you'd like to address city council this evening, come on up, give us your name and address, and three minutes is yours. Everyone's itching to get to the debate. That's it. <laughs> All right, I don't see anyone for call to audience, so we'll move on now to the consent agenda. Consent agenda are routine items that we enact in one motion unless someone from council pulls one of the consent agenda items. Uh, let me read that for you now. Item A is the approval of the minutes of the regular and special meetings held September 12, 2016. Item B is the approval to pay Remco storage systems 
uh, in the amount of $4,970 to be charged to the election contractual services uh, line item. Item C is the approval of a resolution declaring the annual recognition of Indigenous Peoples Day as submitted by Councilman uh, Paulica. Item D is the approval of a revised resolution regarding the establishment of an obsolete property rehabilita rehabilitation district at the parcels listed as submitted by our city planner. Item E is the approval of the CDBG sub-recipient agreement for release of fiscal year 2016 funds. Item F is the approval of the purchase agreement for the sale of 390 West Chesterfield Avenue for $14,000 and to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute the purchase agreement and proceeds to be placed in the community and economic development line item and to be transferred at the end of the 2015, 2016 fiscal year and committed in fund balance for future use. Item G is the approval of the one-year agreement to use the city's southwest storage yard as a transfer site for leaves by the cities of Oak Park, Pleasant Ridge, Huntington Woods, and Lathrop Village be approved and that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to sign said agreements. Item H is the approval of the allied proposal of $5,240 to install carpet in the lower level of City Hall and that the DPW director be authorized to sign the proposal to be charged to the D general fund capital account. Item I is the approval for the DPW director for the DPW director to sign the consent to co assignment between the City of Ferndale and Technical Logistics Corporation. And finally, item J is the approval of the bills and payroll as submitted by City Manager's Office subject to review by the Council Finance Committee. What is Council's pleasure on the consent agenda this evening? I have questions whenever that's appropriate. We do that before okay, the Okay, uh, unless you're pulling something, we'll do a motion uh, and support and then we'll talk about the items. Okay. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Yeah, support. All right. So moved by Paulica and uh, supported by Leakes May. Now, mm -hmm. questions, comments? Sure. On agenda item 6G, I guess this is for Lloyd. The, the, the it says approval of one-year agreements to use City Southwest Yard, but in the body of the agreements, the Huntington Woods, for example, only runs from October 1st, 2016 to December 16th, 2016. And then I don't see a whole lot of dates after that. So is this a year-long agreement, or is this a four-month agreement? No, the, the, lease, the lease season is only for that period of time, so that's what it's typically been. Okay, so if we've had discussion about development in that space, uh, and if we continue to pursue that within the 12-month time frame, are we in jeopardy of breach of contract? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. No, that might be a legal question. question. No, yeah. as I understand it through the chair, is yeah. that this is for the 2016 leaf Good removal question. program. So the one year extend. is 2016. So one year is in early 12 months. One year yeah. is the fall season. Yeah. Right. Correct. Okay. So we don't we don't store their leaves in the spring. No. Uh, and just for clarification, no it's it, paragraph one of the agreement. It provides that it's October 1st through December right. of, of 2016. That's what's my eye. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Um, yeah. Mr. Mayor, if no one objects, I would like to read uh, the resolution under 6C. Yes, please do. A resolution declaring every second Monday in October as Indigenous Peoples Day in the City of Ferndale, encouraging other institutions to recognize the day and reaffirming the city's commitment to promote the well-being and growth of Ferndale's American Indi Indian and Indigenous community. The city of Ferndale recognizes that the indigenous peoples of the lands that would later become known as the Americas have occupied these lands since time immemorial. The city recognizes that the fact, the fact that Ferndale is built upon the homelands of the villages of the Fox, Sauk, Wyandotte, Huron, Kickapoo, and Potawatomi tribes of this region without whom the building of this region would not have been possible. The city values the many contributions made to our community through the indigenous peoples, knowledge, labor, technology, science, philosophy, arts, and the deep cultural contributions that have sustainably shaped the character of the city of Ferndale. And the city of Ferndale has a responsibility to oppose the systematic racism towards indigenous people in the United States, with, which per, per, perpetuates high rates of poverty and income inequality exacerbating disproportionate health, education, and social crises. The city promotes the closing of the equality gap for indigenous peoples through policies and practices that reflect the experiences of indigenous peoples, 
ensure greater access and opportunity, and honor our nation's indigenous roots, history, and contributions. Indigenous Peoples Day was first proposed in 1977 by a delegation of native nations to the United Nations sponsored International Conference on Discrimination Against Indigenous Populations in the Americas. The city of Ferndale was declared by the voice of the people to be a human rights city on November 7, 2006, committing itself to protect, respect, and fulfill the full range and inherent human rights for all as set forth in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and numerous other international human rights treaties. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council and the City of Ferndale, the Mayor, concurring that the City of Ferndale strongly supports the proposition that Indigenous Peoples Day shall be an opportunity to celebrate the thriving cultures and values of the Indigenous peoples of our region. The City of Ferndale affirms that it is city policy to participate in any Indigenous Peoples Day celebrations and activities. The City of Ferndale strongly encourages Ferndale Public Schools to include the teachings of Indigenous Peoples history and the City of Ferndale encourages other businesses, organizations, and public institutions within the, and outside the city to recognize Indigenous Peoples Day. The City of Ferndale firmly commits to continue its efforts to promote the well-being and growth of Ferndale Amer Ferndale's American Indian and Indigenous Ferndale's American Indian and Indigenous Community. Ooh, well done. Thank you. <laughs> and here, here. Yes. Thank you. Other comments or questions on the consent agenda this evening? I do want to make a clarification on. Um, number uh, 6H, which is the installation of the carpet, and yeah. that those funds are actually being paid through our insurance um, payment from the flood. So this is not taxpayer money that's going to perform the work. It is the insurance. So we have a carpet already in he for here already from insurance. Mm -hmm. The rest of the carpet is in the hallway and some of the stairs. So that's separate. Okay. Yeah. So we it, we can't fix the floor, so we need to cover it because it's got too many indentations and it's becoming unsafe. So okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but this carpet in here is already paid for by insurance, and our carpet's actually in a warehouse. It waiting, is waiting for <sighs> us to get it in here. <laughs> we should sell that's it by the it. square. Or I know, something. right? That's, that's how we're voting on for five thousand dollars for this. We're no, so the she said the hallway and hallway hallway stairways. Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Good point. All right. Uh, any further comments or questions? Bob, would you call the roll on the consent agenda? Councilmember Pollica? Yes. Leeks May? Yes. Martin? Yes. And Mayor Coulter? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the consent agenda is adopted. Moving on to the regular agenda, we have just one item this evening, and that is the consideration to clarify the Ferndale Housing Commission board member terms. Who's introducing that item? <laughs> Sorry, I think it's Heather. <laughs> Heather, you want to introduce that item? <laughs> if not, I'm going to make something up on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm familiar enough with it. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's been some confusion over which board members were appointed to take which previous board members' terms, mm -hmm. um, and there were there was certain understanding over when certain terms would expire, mm -hmm. and so some of those came into um, conflict and confusion um, as we updated our bylaws this past year, and so um, the board has talked it over and asked, um, you know, if, if we may request that the terms be clarified and reappointments made so that they align with what board members' understandings were. Yeah. Um, of the terms that they were accepting and the expiration of those dates. Um, and okay. we've been working closely with the clerk's office to try to make sure that we have an accurate historical record and that, um, you know, going forward, things are um, aligned properly. Great. And just a clarification yeah. question. Back in the day, mm -hmm. we had explored the option with HUD of adding another resident member of the commission to reflect Autumn House as well. And now that you have an active advisory board there, is that something worth revisiting, or is that just an absolute no from HUD? 
Um, I could certainly ask. I don't know that anything would preclude us from having more than one okay. resident on our board. I think it's required that we have at least one. The requirement um, is at least one, and we got some mm -hmm. pushback from HUD on having two. Oh. Um, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know that that's really the case. So I guess okay. what I'm saying, if it's an interest to you, I, I think council would entertain that to expand Great. the resident Great. membership. Great. Could through the chair. I think the statute requires up to five, not more than five members, uh, and one member that's a resident. So uh, the appointing. So you can't make it bigger. You can't make it a six-person board right, by but, adding. But a, you a currently resident. have a vacancy. Mm -hmm. right. so. Just a thought. So okay. the, but my understanding, and perhaps you know. That the attorney could help with us. Uh, my understanding is we're not prevented from having more than one resident member. I'm hearing, yeah, I'm hearing that, that you're not. Uh, that you're not prevented. You, you're just prevented on, from going based on the language of the statute. Mm -hmm. And also remind me, is that still a? It used to be like a, a city manager appointment. Correct. Right. Is it the still that way? Amended, We've right. amended it. We've amended it to the city manager. So to, to the city mayor. It's a, mm -hmm. Yep. To you guys. Mayor appointed with mayor council, council consent. Yes. Consent. That's yeah. what I thought. I just wanted. To, we yeah. I thought we did that. <clears throat> All right. Any any questions? Other questions or comments about that item? I'd move that we confirm the housing commissioner terms as amended. Support. <laughs> yeah, uh, moved by Martin, supported by Lee May. Any any final thoughts or questions? All right, Barb, would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Lee May. Yes. Martin. Yes. Alica. Yes. Mayor Coulter. Yes. Thank you. That item is adopted. So that concludes our regular agenda in 29 minutes. Uh, call call to council, however. Uh, <laughs> Chief Collins, anything from the police department for the good of the community this evening? We missed you last time, but Captain Palazzolo filled in ably. You know, I didn't make the rookie mistake of even getting to talk in the back of the room like the captain did. I just want to point that out that I still have value. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple, three things uh, for uh, council's attention. Uh, not wanting to give the captain more uh, props than he needs, but the, <laughs> after the uh, Nice incident uh, with uh, the truck going through in the... Um, in the event that they had, uh, the captain worked very diligently and wrote a grant uh, through uh, the GAC, which is the grant um, coalition that we get money, that we can uh, address money for um, from Homeland Security. We are not the grant recipient. It's actually uh, the uh, Oak Tech, uh, but he secured a grant for $36,000 uh, in which we bought 100 water-filled, not they don't have water in them, but water-fillable barriers they are the large one, four foot high there um, mm -hmm. uh, to prevent uh, for weekend. But the nice thing is we're going to be keeping them in Ferndale. He is going to be co coordinating uh, anybody else that wants to get them. Anybody that is a uh, Oak Tech member can use them for their events, but they'll be stored here. So we kind of have first uh, dibs on them, and we have, probably have more uh, um, uh, festivals than anybody else. So it's a so, great yeah. addition. Yeah. It's a great job that he did. A uh, very short period of time. Uh, it's still a few months out before that uh, all gets uh, put together. It also comes with a large trailer so to transport them. So you know, really, really good job. Uh, the second thing is we want to give one more uh, shout out to the community. If they are interested in the Citizens Academy, that will begin the first Thursday in October. Uh, I believe there are a couple of seats left, and if we um, we would probably try, if it's close, we'll probably try to squeeze as many as we can in that's reasonable. Uh, if you'd like to... Uh, um, any would, anyone would like to apply for that position or that uh, academy, you can do it online on the city's website, easy to find the application. And lastly, uh, we wanted to make sure that the community was aware of our first annual prayer breakfast, which is going to be held at the high school on October 15th, 9 a.m. to 11. Uh, the mayor is going to be one of the MCs, um, and we will be um, presenting one community member and one law enforcement officer uh, a award for their tireless, tireless effort to increase unity and peace. There is a, uh, a $25 uh, donation that is requested. If you want more information, you can contact Sergeant Brown at the police department, 541-3650, uh, Pastor Jim Poole, Reverend Jim Poole, I'm sorry, 248-506-5457 or you can contact the um, Ferndale Coalition office at the high school, and that number is 248-548-8600.
extension 2583. And uh, they can give you more information and make reservations for you. And we'd like to see as many uh, folks as there. All of the, all of the churches in um, the school district have been invited. Uh, many of them have said that they will be there. Uh, so we're trying to get as many as the other members of the community to show up as well. Yeah. At the high school, you said, right? It will be at the high yeah. school at the uh, auditorium, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Jenny, anything from HR this evening? Good evening, Mayor and Council. I just wanted to give a brief update. Um, I was here about a month or two ago giving an update on our Health and Wellness Center. Um, we have selected our dates for our in-house um, health risk assessment event and flu shot event for October 25th and 26th for our employees and their dependents. Um, we've received already an overwhelming response of people who are beginning to sign up, people who are already going for their HRA. So we're really excited about that. In addition, we're beginning to offer next Wednesday, um, we've partnered with Shine On Yoga, and we're going to begin to offer yoga for employees as well. So we're moving right along with our wellness committee and implementing things right away that, um, that our employees have, have asked for and are interested in. So, Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, anything <coughs> from Parks and Rec this evening? Good evening. Good evening. Um, our staff is currently getting things prepped and ready to go for our Fall Fest. That's October 8th over at Martin Road. And we're going to have carnival games, bounce house, face painting, photo booth, arts and crafts. Um, DPW has been great at helping us with anything that we need. So we certainly do appreciate them and everything that they do for us. Um, and they're also going to be doing the hay rides over there. And that will take place from 11 to 3. And you can get your tickets <coughs> at the door, and we're excited for it. We're certainly excited for it. So I'll come back with an update of how many we think we have. Excellent. So, thank, thank you. you. Uh, right. the chair, oh, yeah. uh, would we, if we wanted to volunteer, of new people that wanted to volunteer, would we contact you? or? Yep, you would contact the Coolick Center, oh, and you would want to talk to Michael Eby over there as he's coordinating all of the volunteers. So you can either send him an email or give a call over there. Right. Thank you. Well, you can let me know and I can pass it along as well. Okay. Thank you. Chief Sullivan, anything for the fire department this evening? No, oh, all right. <laughs> your mayor? Your mayor does. <laughs> your mayor, mayor does. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Cheryl, anything for the fire department? <laughs> all right. Kara, anything from communications or community engagement? <clears throat> Good evening, your mayor. Thank you. <laughs> I just have a couple of quick things. I was um, it's Frank O'Donnell who calls me your worship ship. <laughs> well, it's a, little um, over, it's a little over the top, right? First, I just want to let our residents know there that um, newsletter time is here. Uh, it's done. It's printing. It's expected to be on mailboxes next week. Um, got some good information about the election. Uh, mostly what we have is great information about uh, the change in our leave pickup schedule for this year. Uh -huh. um, there'll be also another piece going out directly about that, so there'll be tons of information heading out. But um, I wanted to let people know that it's coming. Also recognize that we've heard from residents that there have been some distribution issues. Um, some residents not receiving a newsletter, others receiving multiples. Um, I've assembled a little uh, team of um, residents in every quadrant of the city and they're going to be my lookouts so we're going to find out exactly when um, they're being received by all of our residents in those areas and how many copies they're getting so that we can address it directly yep. so if anybody has um, any information about that that they'd like to share with me uh, I would encourage them to call uh, number is 248-546-2501 and then I have um, a quick update um, on behalf of our city clerk, Marnie. Uh, tomorrow is National Voter Registration Day, yay, which is very exciting. And Marnie uh, is, uh, worked very hard with uh, Barb here to organize a fantastic little party, um, a registration event in front of City Hall. Uh, it's going to be from 3 to 9 p.m. tomorrow. Everybody's welcome to come. Uh, there's going to be face painting and henna tattoos, cider and donuts. Uh, we have heard rumors that Uncle Sam may show up um, to talk to people. There's going to be giveaways <laughs> for kids. So basically, if you're not registered, show up tomorrow, and they will register you on the spot. 
if you are registered, show up anyway, and um, they'll be confirming where you're supposed to vote, so everybody make sure that they have all the right information. Um, they'll also have absentee um, ballots available for people who need them. And uh, I, th I believe, Barb, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's not just Ferndale residents. If, if you're from out of the city, yes, we can handle that as well. Okay. So did I get all that right? You got it right. Okay, excellent. <laughs> so okay. that's it. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Thanks, Kara. Lloyd, anything from DPW this evening? I wanted to let the public and council know that sometime in the next week to 10 days, an informational packet will be going out uh, from the water department on how to limit uh, your exposure to lead in your water. Uh, City of Ferndale's water does not have any lead in the water mains. Where the problem comes in is whatever the status of the plumbing may be and the service line heading to the home. Mm -hmm. And so there will be quite a bit of information and DPW is always willing to help and uh, interpret those um, instructions if they choose to call the DPW at 248-546-2519 and uh, be sure to look for that and there's some valuable information for the public. So, so let me ask you, if a, if a resident had, had decided or, or, or learned that their service line was lead and they wanted to replace it, that's a, I mean, that's a pretty big ticket item. Are there, what, what sort of resources are available? That, are you aware of any of? Or I am currently what are their pers options? pursuing state yeah. uh, drinking water funds. Um, I don't know if yeah. we'll be eligible, yeah. uh, but the the state has determined. Um, I had our engineering consultant investigate whether or not that would be eligible. In the past, it had not been, and okay. uh, he uh, reported back that to his surprise, mm -hmm. they would consider an application from the city of Ferndale uh, to help our our homeowners and residents, uh, you know, assist with that cost. Um, we're in the early stages of promoting and investigating that possibility, um, but we're doing a, a lot of the data background collection as far as how many homes, what, uh, you know, what uh, type of service line they may have. We're looking at all of our historical records, and then eventually we may actually have to go into the field and physically inspect the, the homes that we have no data on. Uh, but we are pursuing that. I'm not sure that we would be successful, but it's certainly yeah. something we're looking into. That was going to be my qu next question. Do you ha do you know, given the age of our city and and when the homes were built, what the what the likely percentage of of homes would have? But it sounds like you're in the process of trying there, to determine. That. There are homes that were built prior to 1950 are more likely to have lead, um, but there's also a gap of homes that may not have a service line made out of lead, but may have. Um, late after the 50s that may have all the way up until I believe the date is 87 that may have lead solder in their with their copper pipe okay. so there's the one thing that's really uh, beneficial for the city is that the water source that we've been using has always had an additive that provides a coating mm -hmm. um, the, the most simple there are some instructions that will be in the pamphlet okay. uh, to check your aerators to flush your lines mm -hmm. but one of the simple things that I've told people for many years to do is that you know after you get up and you do your morning routine you take a shower you can use the facilities and that sort of thing um, if you flush your line before you make your morning coffee and you place a pit after the line's been flushed when the temperature changes a different color that uh, sorry a different temperature that usually indicates that the water has has changed in the household lines so that you're receiving colder water from the water main when that happens if you fill a pitcher and just place that in your refrigerator even though you may be gone for a period of time every time you use the water you can use the one out of the fridge rather than flushing your lines and so um, that's just a simple way to just fill a pitcher <coughs> use it out of your fridge and it's fine yeah. okay good thank you there'll be some valuable information but anybody who would like some you know further clarification is welcome to call the dpw good thanks Floyd. appreciate mm -hmm. it joe anything for the council all right barb anything from the clerk's office this evening uh, the only thing we've got is um October 11, last day to register to vote. Yeah. So make sure you get those applications to us. Um, AV ballots are going out on Wednesday, the absentee ballots. So those requests we've received, they get mailed on Wednesday. That's the first almost 2,000 of them going out. Are going out when? Wednesday. This Wednesday, the first batch of absentees. I, I did have someone ask me that. Um, are you aware this is just, uh, of anything that we do, we do or the school does to help I mean, they got they the, the seniors there would be 18, right? And that's a that's a pretty uh, targeted a group, population. Uh, do they do anything over there, or do we do anything with them? 
we did a, let's see, I think it was April or May last year, we did at university yeah. and did a presentation to the seniors there. Yeah. We'll do another presentation to the seniors in the spring. Yeah. Um, we've been asked to do a presentation to the third through fifth graders to get them interested. We did that once before mm -hmm. with the kids here at City Hall, but we, would, we had the equipment right. so we could take it out to them and they can have a practice session. <coughs> okay. Something fun for them. Yep. Good. Thank you. April, anything from the city manager? Nothing office? tonight, sir. No. Dan, Chris. Nothing, Mayor. Nothing, Nothing tonight. tonight. Okay. Uh, Dan Martin. Uh, I just have one, actually a question for Heather, if she'll entertain it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Put you on the spot. But I remember last November, several residents of Withington actually took a cab to their precincts to be able to vote. Um, I don't know if you'd considered on election day any kind of transportation arrangements, or if that's something maybe we can have a discussion with. Them that's about. a great point. Yeah, I th thought it was a little difficult. I can fit like six in my car. So. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, I hear the charger's I, gone. I mean, that limits it. But well, I, wah, wah, wah. Um, <laughs> I would love to discuss just that. Just to put it on your on yes. your radar and whatever we can do at the city to help facilitate that, because it just broke my heart a little bit. She had to take a cab off. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you for pointing yeah. that out. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That's it. All right. Councilwoman Lee May. Well, I just have really an expression of gratitude. So uh, from January up until now, I've been able to uh, really attend a lot of uh, conferences and meet other council members and have some great experiences to make me more, a more effective council member. So I just want to thank my council and city manager and, and your staff for uh, making that possible. So I appreciate it. So kudos to you. Thank you. Thanks. We are delighted to have you. Thank you. Councilman Pollica. I have nothing this evening. All right, and nor do I. So <laughs> it's kind of a quiet evening for the most part. And with 45 minutes after we start, uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.